My husband didn't have much say in the design of our home, but I had to incorporate his family heirloom Eames chair. And it actually doesn't look half bad in the corner of the room. Right, Puff? I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. This week we shine the spotlight on memorable homes with the very designers and architects who created them. And we begin with the always in demand Sasha Bykoff. See how she transformed an 1820s townhouse into a maximalist celebration of all that she loves. See for yourself. What I love most about being an interior designer is that I get to be inspired by my clients, by art, architecture, travel, and I get to create beautiful spaces for people to enjoy. Hi, I'm interior designer Sasha Bykoff and welcome to my New York City home. In general, my personal style is Marie Antoinette at Studio 54. So let me show you what I did. As you enter, we walk into an open floor plan. I wanted it to feel really inviting, really cozy, and really eclectic. Every room needs a starting point, and for me, it was the wallpaper. I chose a 16th century French braconnier wallpaper because I loved how it felt French countryside, and I loved the charm of it. Here in the living area, I paired a very old antique Persian Tabrizi rug with a 1960s French space age Pierre Paulin ribbon chair. It adds a sense of modernity and fun. The coffee table is a contemporary piece from Glass Italia, but the best part about it is that it's a spectrum of rainbow colors. I upholster the sofa in a blue velvet, which really corresponds to the wallpaper, the rug, and the coffee table. The design, however, feels very traditional English with its fringe base. What I love about tile top tables is that it has this old world charm to it. The actual tiles are French and they date back from the 18th century. Around the table, I wanted something a little more simple to counterbalance with the tiles. So I placed these organic straw mid-century looking chairs. And finally, the piece de resistance, the custom banquette I designed with a camel back in the perfect pink velvet check fabric. Originally, this kitchen had zero life to it, so what I did was I lacquered the kitchen cabinetry blue and I added new rose gold hardware. And how can I forget one of my favorite pieces in the room, my little green mushroom lamp. It's my modern touch for the kitchen. But what really drew me to this space when I first saw it is the garden. Stepping out there, you feel transported to another place, almost as if you were in England. When I entertain, I like to do beautiful fresh flowers on the table, colorful glassware, and tequila iced in a bucket. Not that I could drink that right now. Overall, I wanted this entire area to feel unique, vibrant, charming, basically a reflection of me. Let's go take a look upstairs. The entire top floor is the primary suite. On the top of the stairs, I set up a vanity station because every girl needs a glam moment. The theme up here is Italian. We may not literally be in a palazzo, but I designed it to transport you to one. I went with the always classic leopard patterned wallpaper. It's warm, it's inviting, with a hint of sexiness. The headboard is made with an ivory crushed velvet and I love the motifs of the pillows. It feels very Baroque and works lovely with the wallpaper. I decided to do scroll work cornices with beautiful long drapes that just puddle the floor. And here I went with an Italian satin trim. My husband didn't have much say in the design of our home, but I had to incorporate his family heirloom Eames chair. And it actually doesn't look half bad in the corner of the room. Right, Puff?
I hope you enjoyed stepping into my world where I've shown you new things and taken you to new places. Now I'm going to kick back and relax. Until next time. Coming up in just a few short minutes, we are in Los Angeles to tour this unique home built to celebrate its impressive views. Welcome back, everyone. And now we're hillside in LA with partners in architecture and life, Peggy Sue and Chris McCullough. Take a look. Hi, I'm Peggy Sue. I'm Chris McCullough. We are architects and we do a lot of homes for our clients, but this one is our personal home. We designed it from the ground up for ourselves. Can't wait to show you our own. We had a lot of fun with this home as it has a lot of different materials and textures. You see that we've layered the spaces using architectural features such as the chimney to create some separation of the space as well as the hillside beyond. We also carry the building material from outside into the inside, blurring the lines of indoor and outdoor. We're in our living room, and our living room has interior plants, a record collection, and sofa for lounging. The steel structure, it's more sturdy than it looks. However, it's only quarter inch thick. The record shelves were designed with the size of the collection in mind. We wanted it in our living room because we play records every day when we cook. And we wanted it close to the kitchen, and we enjoy entertaining in this space as well. Overall, this living room is our favorite place to hang out. We designed this dining room to have its skylight above so you'd have daylighting throughout the day. And then I created a piece of art to be a focal point on this wall. This piece is made with mini discs. It's a sort of form of pixel art. We decided to use brass to make our dining table provide a contrast from the dark color scheme on the floor and the background. One of the seating arrangements is using a natural wood log, and it's wood we rescue from the wood chipper. I love the wood bench because it has wheels and we're able to move it around when we have larger gatherings at the house. And speaking of moving, this is our listening bar where we have turntables and a mixer. At the top of the stairs, we have a guardrail planter that has a drainage system in it. It actually drains to the exterior through the base into the wall and under the floor. You will see more of connecting to the outside by having a roof garden. If you like the plants here, you will like what we did to our primary bedroom. This bedroom is very minimal and clean, just for sleeping and really enjoy the nature, being part of our sanctuary. The bedroom is facing east, so we like to wake up early in the morning watching the sunrise coming up from behind the ridge. Also, continue the language of indoor-outdoor, we bring the plaster wall from the outside to the inside. Let's wrap up the tour of the interior spaces by going to check out the backyard. We love the backyard, its connection to nature. One of my favorite features is the roof overhang provides shade and it's quite wonderful to sit and read a book. And that deep overhang is also where the planter roof is from our bedroom. When the irrigation water overflows, it provides the water for the wild animals. Not only was this one of our projects in our architecture studio, but it's our home. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting. Coming up, Havana on the Hudson at this unique and very personal apartment in Washington Heights. We'll see you in just a few.
Welcome back, everyone. Architect Adam Rolston finds inspiration in the idea that design should reflect an owner's life, experiences, and travels. This ethos shines through in his work and his own 1930s Art Deco apartment in Washington Heights. Take a look. The thing I love about architecture is making beautiful things for many people. I'm Adam Ralston, and I live in Washington Heights. Welcome to my home. When we bought the apartment, it hadn't been touched since the 1930s. We bought it from one of the original owners. And when we renovated it, we wanted to respect the original architecture. We had just come back from a trip to Havana. And so we were joking that we wanted the feeling of Havana on the Hudson. Even though I'm an architect and interior designer, we didn't really decorate this place. We just collected it. It's all things that we've collected over 30 years of being together to create a home. So we started with this idea of Havana on the Hudson right here in the foyer. Havana had its heyday in the deco era and all of the buildings now have this kind of beautiful patina to them. And so we recreated that here with this integral colored plaster. The integral colored plaster is actually plaster with pigment integral to it. What that does is it brings the most important thing about the apartment, the Palisades, this beautiful view right into the apartment. Conceptually, it's sort of the same color, this off green, but also physically, like it aligns. That datum is brought into the apartment. So this is our live, work, play living room. We do everything here from watching TV to dining to cocktails. The thing I loved about this table was the combination of the oxidized brass and the chrome. I moved here in the 80s and there was a glamour to that era that I've always been drawn to. And so I started collecting Jay Spector who comes from that era. Our studio, Ink Architecture and Design, developed this wing back as an homage to a Scandinavian designer from that same era. I think of furniture as my friends. They patina and get better with age. All this stuff that we surround ourselves with makes this home uniquely ours. And that's what good design should always do. The rug is actually inspired by a paint pour artwork. And of course, we added a little bit of violet and mauve to connect with the rest of the colors in the apartment. And the colors were drawn from literally the view. This window was one of the things that sold us on the apartment. It's so unique with the industrial sash casements looking out towards the George Washington Bridge. Steel windows are no longer that common and we stripped them down to the original steel just to give it that patina, just like the front door. It's just character that old buildings have that new construction doesn't. Looking out this window, it's like you're looking through history and it's breathtaking. One of the problems with this kitchen is that it was teeny and dark. So the first thing we did was open up this opening to get light in and also to connect to this little home office. We wanted it to feel like a ship's galley, so we went all stainless steel. The kitchen sink is actually a bar back sink. And we added the wood top just to bring a little warmth. And one of my favorite details is the sliding upper cabinets. And the color in here is mauve, same line as in the foyer. And back here in the little home office is my partner's collection of clocks, because he's always late. Welcome to the bedroom where all the magic happens. Wanted to bring that same line in, but here we reverse the color where the color's above and the, the white is below to lighten it and brighten it. It's got two exposures. I can see the Tappan Sea Bridge from my bed. There is nothing better than waking up to this view. And then we brought the Palisades in literally this time with a tapestry inspired by the Cloisters tapestries. And it was a picture that I took of the Palisades out the window and put it on the wall. It's nothing better than faux fur. The bed is Jay Spector again. It's a combination of brass and oxidized copper. And then it's upholstered to match the rug because we're crazy. The vertebrae skeleton, one of my favorite objects, just to remind me of my mortality as I go to bed every night. A big round mirror for the 1930s feel. And another Jay Spector credenza because I'm obsessed. The artwork is of a Trojan box. I made it in the 90s. You know, we're in the middle of the AIDS crisis and it was a call to arms. And another weird piece, which is actually a grain drum that we use as our hamper. Come to think of it, after showing you guys this house, we have a lot of weird stuff. This home is just a celebration of the life that my partner and I have built together. And that's what all great architecture should be. It should be an expression of the people that use it. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. It was awesome having you in my home. Coming up just after the break, we head to beautiful Savannah, Georgia. We'll see you in just a few.
Welcome back, everyone. Now we're in beautiful Savannah, Georgia with interior designer Lily Brown. See how she transformed her client's traditional 1850s home into a bespoke and sophisticated showstopper that's both stylish and functional. Take a look and enjoy. Hi, I'm Lily Brown with Lily Brown Interiors. This is a historic townhouse in downtown Savannah overlooking Monterey Square that we completely renovated a few years ago for our client. It's 3,000 square feet spread out over multiple levels. Please come inside, I'd love to show you around. Coming into the living room, these are all original moldings and these original parlor doors are so beautiful. We did replace the fireplace surrounds throughout the house with a beautiful black marble. We also had to get creative with using furniture for multi-purposes because space is limited. So this doubles as a small workspace downstairs. Our goal with this house was to honor the historic nature and the existing architecture while also updating it in a really fresh and sophisticated way that felt current for modern living. In these historic homes, oftentimes the kitchen, dining room, and living room are open to each other. So we wanted to create a cohesive design that flowed through the house and maximize the sense of openness. We created a symmetrical arrangement in here, adding more storage for spillover from the kitchen. This lighting fixture is one of my favorite things in the house. I love the scale of it. It really grounds the table and creates interest that you see through multiple points in the home. We had this table custom made in an oval to fit this room for a lot of circulation around the room without making it feel like it was weighed down by a huge dining table that they may not use that often. As I mentioned, this house was built in 1851. So this was actually the original exterior wall and it's masonry and quite thick. So when we did this renovation, we had to bring in some steel beams and do some other measures to shore up the structural integrity so we could create these openings in the kitchen. One of everybody's favorite elements about this house is the black refrigerator. It actually is very chic looking and it's easier to find your food within your refrigerator with the dark color. 48 inch chef's range, perfect for cooking. We actually had this hood custom made with the brass strapping on the stainless steel. And then this backsplash is all marble. I love the character that it added and the texture that it gave to this room against all the classic white cabinetry. Next, let's go upstairs where we'll find the primary suite. This client is a man and I wanted his bedroom to feel masculine and sleek, but also warm and serene. I kept with a much more neutral palette in here, but we have a lot of color that we brought in in the art. His bed is beautiful. I love this velvet upholstered headboard. We added sconces that are built in that can extend over the bed to help with light for reading. I think we really achieved a high-end hotel feel here with all the comforts of home. And right through these French doors is the primary bath. It's really amazing. These houses were not built with bathrooms originally, so they were all added on. We, through good design, really maximized the space of this bathroom. We have an incredible walk-in shower. One of my favorite elements in this bathroom is this inlaid tile rug. I think it adds a lot of architectural interest in here, and it beautifully accents the tile that runs throughout the shower and the rest of the bath. We converted part of the addition that happened in this house into a wonderful primary closet full of storage. We have lighted rods. We even have room for luggage and things like that to be hidden in this room. And since design is all about the details, your laundry hampers right here at your fingertips. Thank you so much for coming to see this home. The client really gave us free reign and entrusted us to design it. And I'm really proud of what we delivered for him. And I'm off to take a walk through some of our beautiful squares here. Coming up just after the break, see how this designer made a traditional Upper East Side apartment feel brand new. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now we're on the Upper East Side with interior designer Philip Thomas. He shows off how he maximized color and brought in modern materials at every turn for both his client and one very chill dog. Hey everyone, I'm Philip Thomas. I'm a designer based here in New York City, and I'm excited to take you on a tour of a project that we recently completed on New York's Upper East Side. So without further ado, let's take a closer look. 
This is the living room. In its previous iteration, it was a much softer yellow. But as with everything in this project, we've gone bold and we chose this intense yellow that almost glows from within. For the ceilings, we used an iridescent gold metallic finish, which helps to bring the natural light into the space and cast a wonderful glow. My client has a big chocolate lab that rules the house. For that reason, we chose these antelope print carpets that are both glamorous and practical at the same time. For the furnishings, we chose traditional silhouettes, but upholstered them in modern textiles that gave them energy and glamour. For example, these club chairs are upholstered in this beautiful pink polka dot velvet. Remember, this room is not only about looking good, but also about making you look good. For that reason, we chose to install these gorgeous mid-century Italian candlelit sconces. They flank this contemporary Eglimise mirror that truly opens up the space. It also reflects our next space beautifully. I always say that if I could only live in one room, I would live in a library. There's something about being surrounded by books. Each one carries a memory, like an old friend. Pink is my client's favorite color, and in this room, we went all in. And I love how the color contrasts with the yellow of the living room. It creates this dynamic energy between the two spaces, but for a sense of cohesion, we also carried the same metallic finish onto the ceiling in the library. And of course, the carpet, which Radley is enjoying right now. As with the living room, we carried the traditional silhouettes into this space, but married them with gorgeous contemporary fabrics. The fabric on the sofa, for example, has a youthful exuberance to it that not only excites the eye, but the imagination. For the bergeres, we chose this intense green vinyl with a lizard texture on it. It's totally unexpected and inviting. My client always wanted an aubergine bedroom. We sourced fabrics from all around the world, including the stunning border on the curtains made of leather and freshwater pearls. We decided to paint the ceiling in a subtle shade of pink. Not only is it different, but it casts a wonderful glow into the space. Although not used very often, we selected this beautiful palm tree lamp from Italy that has a character of its own, even when it's not illuminated. And for the club chair, we chose this beautiful Indian-inspired print to contrast with the color of the walls. All of these elements come together to create a space that my client looks forward to coming home to at night after a long day in the city. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour today of our recently completed Upper East Side project. I hope it inspired you to take a chance on the design of your own home. Or you can just hire me. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>